Hey, this is Aaron with Faith to Walk Ministries, and uh, I have a message today that I believe is as important as life and death. I have actually wrote out the notes. So I don't want to forget anything. But with the lowering of the value of human life, especially innocent human life in our country, God has pressed on me and my heart to give a message about this issue. First, let me say that God offers love and his forgiveness to anyone who seeks his forgiveness and repents. But what we have to remember is that God has a strong warning for individuals and a nation that will not live by God's words. And so let me show you some verses that uh, pull this out. I'm going to, if you have your Bibles, I want you to look it up. If you don't, look it up later. But we're going to look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're going to see something that some people did that kind of gets close to what's happening now in our nation. But Jeremiah chapter 7, read verses 30 through 34. And so think about the innocent life that's being devalued in our country. Listen to these words and see what God would say to us today. This is his warning, starting in verse 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the sun in Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. So let's take apart what this passage is saying about what was happening back in that time. In essence, what people were doing, they were sacrificing their children in the fire to the god Tophet. Now, found in these places were urns with the remains of thousands of children from almost from birth all the way up to six years old in some cases. We uh, And we read that, and I did a little bit more studying in that and realizing that even what's interesting, the very wealthy people wanted to sacrifice kids. Believe it or not, they would buy a poor child to bring to sacrifice uh, in these sacrifices as well. I mean, and we read that, we're horrified. But realize two aspects. The first is they killed thousands of innocents over a course of time. They did it for success and blessings, better crops that year, things like that. We, in America, kill the innocent life of over 4,000 over 4, per day. For, the, for convenience and what they would consider success. Well, I got to do this to have a successful life or I just can't be pregnant now. And so the thing is, we are doing the same thing, but it's it, an increased amount. I believe if those people who sacrificed their kids to fire saw how many deaths we were doing today, they would freak about what's going on. Um, because to them, they had a, a you know, into their, in their mind, they had a good reason. Um, which was no good reason at all. There is no good reason to sacrifice and to kill the innocent. So this God, that if uh, today we don't do it to a God called Tophet, but to the God of really uncaring, selfish living, um, the God of success, things like this, to the God of, oh my goodness, my parents might ground me if they find out I'm pregnant. You know, one of the reasons we have abortion so much in this country is our parents, and I'm talking to you parents, the kids think that you do not have the capability to understand what they're going through, to not just yell at them and get them in trouble and ground them for life. If they understood that your the parents are caring, concerned, I think things would be different. But let's see what God says 
about this. Let's look, pick apart that passage. Verse 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord, they have set their abominations. So verse 30, we taught it he calls what they were doing evil and an abomination. Now let me just tell you, when God says something is abomination, it means it's not good. It's not good. And so verse 31, God did not command them to do this. In fact, the very opposite. The, this wouldn't even come into the heart of God. Verse 32. He calls this a slaughter. In fact, he, he changed the location's name to the Valley of Slaughter, not only because of what they were doing, but because of what God was about to do to them. Verse 31, God would allow death to the people that applauded death. Listen to this. They would allow death. He would allow death to the people who applauded death. The lack of value for innocent life would come to them as horrifically as they cheered it. Let me repeat that. The lack of value for innocent life would come to them as horrifically as they cheered it. In fact, um, it was so. it's going to be so bad that it says when God allows the judgment to come on this, these people that there is no place to bury the dead because they're, they're dying too fast. And he would take the sound of mirth or the sound of rejoicing and the sound of gladness away. Even a joyful no, uh, sound of a wedding will not be heard. Now, we, once again, what would, why would God do this? And what's he going to do with us? I believe, I believe what he's going to do, and this is the part of the prophetic of what this message is, I believe God's judgment is going to fall. This is not the judgment of the great tribulation, but the judgment of a nation as he has done before. If you read through scriptures, he has judged nation and upon nation upon nation. It wasn't the great tribulation. That's going to be so yet to come. But this is the judgment of a nation. It's interesting. You do not find America's or anything about America specifically found in scriptures. You read and the nations that could include us but it doesn't exclude us either. So let's look at two other verses. Um, and before that, I want to say, I believe that this is going to be, um, I believe this is going to start in the East, the North and the East, where these decisions are being made is where this is going to start. Um, how it's going to be about, we don't know. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, and it's very powerful verse, and it's God saying, I'm giving you a choice. I'm giving you a choice. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, God speaking, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Listen to this, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed or thy children may live. Now, God is presenting not only individuals, but our nation with a choice, life and death, blessing or cursing. Choose life both, that both you and your children may live. You know, Christ is life and also innocent life is what he's talking about. Choose life. Right now, some parts are choosing death. They are, they are in essence, shaking their fist at God and choosing death. Well, understand that choosing death is choosing cursing. Choosing death is choosing cursing. And he's saying here that your joy, the applause, the laughter will be taken away. God will take it away. And so let's look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Galatians 6, verse 8. I'm trying to keep this pretty short, but I need to get the message out. Galatians. Six, verse 8. And here's what it says. It says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. So the biggest thing is those who are sowing to please the flesh, it, they will reap corruption. Now, I don't know, once again, I don't know when this is going to happen. 
I don't know how this is, could happen. It could be an invasion. It could be civil unrest that gets awful. It could be pestilence. But it will hit unless there's repentance. Unless there's repentance. It will begin, I believe, once again, I mentioned it earlier, and center in, in the east, the northeast, where these we're seeing these decisions come from. But God is calling individuals to repent and turn to him, to get real. He's calling the church to stop playing church and get real with God. He is calling the church to rise up and proclaim Christ as truth. He is calling our nation to repent. He is calling us to sow to the spirit, then we will shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. This is a message that's so important as life and death. I ask you to share it. Because our, us as individuals and as a nation need to repent back to God because I tell you what, he, it's clear. As, as clear as he did it when they sacrificed the innocence in the fire, he is going to do it to us. He's going to take that laughter and that cheering we saw and he's going to turn it totally different. It will be wailing. It will be crying. It will be screaming because of the loss of the judgment. This is not the great tribulation. This is the judgment of a nation. Let our nation turn back to God. But it happens when each individual turns to Jesus Christ fully, completely, without reservation. Hey, I ask you just to share this. God bless. Turn to Jesus.